All right, so today I'm going to be working on a John Deere riding lawnmower. This is the 17.5 horsepower, 500cc uh, Briggs & Stratton engine. And today what we're going to do is replace the carburetor. All right, now this is a really easy job. Um, we're going to take off the uh, air cleaner, so go ahead and just unlock your cover. Pull it off. And it also is a really good time to replace your air filter. So just go ahead and pull that straight out. Now, what we're gonna do is, we're gonna take off your, this is your feed line from your gas tank. So you're just gonna go ahead and take the um, hose clamp off here, and then just pull this line directly off. Now you might get some gas uh, run out, so you may wanna put something underneath there. Uh, this is a breather tube, so what we're gonna do is just pull directly straight out on here. This one does not have a hose clamp on it. And then what we're gonna do is take out four uh, bolts. These are 10 millimeter. So there's one here on the back of the shroud. There's one way over here in the corner, right, right down here in the corner. And there's two on the front. There's one here and there'll be one here. Now these are 10 millimeter. So go ahead and take those out. And also there'll be one screw right down here and it's a straight slot. Come on, it should, it's not focusing. Anyways, there's a screw right here. Hopefully you can see that. So let's go ahead and take all five out. All right, to make it easier to take off this bolt here, uh, we'll go ahead and remove this breather line. Uh, this also, this is the, uh, this is your fuel intake here. This is your fuel pump. And this will be the line running to your carburetor. Now this is a breather. So we're just going to go ahead and pinch this and then pull this whole thing off. That way you have easy access to the bolt that's right behind here. All right, so now um, that you're replacing the carburetor, uh, it's a really good time to replace the fuel filter since you have a brand new carburetor. And uh, let's go ahead and disconnect this. Uh, sometimes when you order a carburetor, you'll actually get the fuel filter too. So go ahead and disconnect it, one or the other and then uh, just pop that off. It also makes it easier to remove this shroud. All right, so the only other thing that you wanna do is just go ahead and pull the oil dipstick out, set that off to the side. And then what we're gonna do is, we're just gonna lift straight up and we'll pull this whole thing right off. And there you go. All right, so the next thing that we're going to do is uh, your intake hose has to come off. So this is a 11 millimeter, so go ahead and take off that bolt. And there's one directly behind over here that you're going to have to remove. All right, so now what you're going to do is just pull straight out. And there's a hose on the back side here that just pops right out that connects to here. It's right here. All right, so you wanna take these out. These bolts, actually, I pulled this one out to kind of show you guys what um, what we're dealing with here. Uh, basically, they fit kind of snug down into the carburetor body. You have a little bit to bite on, so you need a deep socket. Uh, at eight millimeter, has a little bit of slop to it, but so does the 516s. However, I am using a 516s that is about the best fit but there is a little bit of wiggle room. So anyways, let's go ahead and take those out. But before you do that, let's go ahead and just disconnect this plug. It's electrical connection. Just pull it straight down. And then your, uh, your top cables here, we'll deal with that after uh, we get those two bolts out. All right, so here's the, uh, the bolts that go in. And then you're gonna have a, a gasket that goes in between your carburetor and uh, your intake manifold. All right, so the easiest way on the, on the choke, this is your choke side here. And so what you're gonna do is, the easiest way, you just slide it on through and then just go ahead and pull the whole thing right straight out. Now you can go ahead and disconnect it from down here. All right, so now on this uh, particular 
connection point. If you look up here, you'll see a secondary line. There's a secondary wire right here. That is a return spring. It just adds tension. That's all it does. And um, what we're gonna do is we'll remove that after we remove this first section. So all we're gonna do is we're just gonna bend it backwards. And I guess if you wanna take it off right now, you can go ahead and do that. But what you'll do is you're gonna just twist it backwards and then it just pops straight out, just like that. All right, so before installing the new carburetor, I just wanna do a real quick once over on the intake manifold. It is plastic, it does take a lot of heat and especially if it's an older model, uh, you wanna see if there's any cracks or any kind of wear that might hinder the operation of the air and fuel getting down into the engine. All right, so in a new uh, carburetor kit, you'll get a new fuel line. Uh, you normally get a fuel filter, but this one didn't come with it. And then you'll get uh, your carburetor, a carburetor gasket, and then uh, two hose clamps for your new uh, fuel line. All right, so the uh, next thing that you want to do is you want to take the old carburetor against the new carburetor and just double check, make sure it's the same identical carburetor. And, um, you know, your uh, butterfly, make sure everything is correct. Uh, your hose inlet. Now, this is the original Briggs & Stratton carburetor which if you want the new one, uh, just the OEM, it's $104 off of Amazon, or you can get an aftermarket one for $30, and they're identically the same. So just make sure your choke is the same and the electrical connection. All right, so the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna hook up the uh, return spring and then just falls right in it'll be the second hole and then what you're going to do is just take the uh the hook and then you're just going to drop it straight down in to the um, throttle body and there you go all right so the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to hook up the choke cable and so all that's gonna do is you're going to take and you're going to slide it in just like that. And then you take and you slide it into back into the bracket in the back here. Let me show you. Okay, and then it just slides back on back through. All right, so the next thing you're gonna do is we're gonna attach the carburetor to the intake manifold. So you're gonna get out your new uh, gasket and your mounting bolts. So go ahead and slide your mounting bolts in, just like that, on both of them. And then what you're gonna do is you're going to put your gasket in place. That way the bolts will hold it in place so it doesn't slide on you. And then you're just going to align it, push your carburetor up to the intake, and then start screwing in your bolts. All right, so let's go ahead and, and tighten these up. Okay, don't bring them up too tight yet. And bring up equal pressure. Now, as they're starting to grab, you want to just kind of suck them up to the intake. Also, remember that you're going into plastic, so don't over tighten it. All right, when you engage your throttle on your dash up into the choke position, you should see your choke close. And if this is working correctly, this should come up and push on the lever, closing your choke, which that is correct. 
All right, at this time, let's go ahead and uh, install your cold air intake. And this actually is uh, your gasket here. So you just wanna double check, make sure that is intact. Um, you do not need any RTV or any kind of sealant here or here. Uh, they just dry fit them. And so let's go ahead and stick this on. Okay. And then we'll go ahead and install your bolts, or sorry, your nuts. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, take your 11 millimeter. We'll go ahead and suck this up. Get equal pressure on each side. Okay. And then what you want to do is just bring tension up on it, but not again, not too, not too tight because you can crack the uh, plastic, same as your intake. All right, so at this time, go ahead and install the uh, breather tube on the back side of the uh, cold air intake. So go ahead and pop that on. Just like that. All right, so now let's go ahead and hook up your uh, electrical connection to the bottom of your float bowl. And um, if it's been dirty and dusty and a lot of grass and all that stuff has been in this area, which it probably has, uh, I highly recommend putting in some dielectric grease. And uh, all you want to do is just take a little bit. And then what we're going to do is you can either hit the terminals up inside if you want to, which actually is probably the best. It's just to go up in here and hit those. Or you can just, uh, you know, put them on down into the holes. And then once you're uh, satisfied with the amount that you put on there, go ahead and pop that dude up in place. And that makes a better electrical connection. All right, so the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to install the shroud. And um, I'm on the right side of the motor now. Uh, where the starter is, uh, oil, where the oil uh, filler tube is. Now, right here, this uh, heat shield, what you're going to do is, if you notice, there's two tabs here facing in towards the uh, motor, and then one that goes on the out. And what's going to happen is, it has to fit in here. So, two go in towards the engine, and one goes towards the out. So, this has to slide down in between. So this plastic piece right here slides down in between here to hold it in place. And also right here, this little lip here is going to ride right down there. And I'll show it to you here in a minute. And it will slides right down into that little crevice. All right, so you have your guide. So right here, there's a guide that actually, um, your, it has, this has to slide over top of your cold air intake. And then when you're dropping it down over your tabs on your metal, um, you can actually put your hand up underneath here and you can feel, <coughs> excuse me, where they're, uh, where they're going into. And then also right here, as long as you have it pretty close to center, there's a spot over here and I think it's gonna be too hard for me to show, but there's a spot, there's a guide that holds the uh, pressure out on the fill tube um, like I showed earlier if your tube is pushed in close to the uh, the edge here then you're off so keep on pulling this out and then repositioning the uh, uh, shroud all right so here's a prime example of what I'm talking about see how this is it sits too far over uh, it missed the guide pin which is right about here and this should be dead center of this circle. And I've seen a lot of people just leave it that way, don't. All right, see how this is centered now? So this is what how you want it to look after it's all done. So go ahead and put your uh, 
uh, your oil dipstick back in here. Let's start putting in your two bolts here and then your two bolts on the back side. All right, and then don't forget your uh, screw on the back side of the uh, cold air intake. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is just hook up the, uh, the breather. This is coming off of the gas tank and it just hooks into your backside of the cold air intake. So go ahead and hook that up. And then what we're gonna do is uh, we'll go ahead and hook up, this is your, this is your fuel pump. So let's go ahead and reconnect this line here. And if you have the new fuel filter, go ahead and install that as, at this time. All right, so now we're gonna hook up the other uh, line running into your uh, fuel pump. So go ahead and slide that on. And then let's hook the clamp up. Just like that. All right, so now what we're gonna do is go ahead and uh, install your uh, hose clamps on each end here and then we'll install your fuel line to the carburetor from your fuel pump. So go ahead and hook it up there and then we'll go ahead and hook it up here and then go ahead and put your, your clamps in place just like that and just like that and there you go. All right, so at this time, you can either try starting your motor to see if the uh, carburetor fixed your problem, or, I mean, I feel confident enough because a new carburetor should be calibrated and all set and ready to go so you don't have to do any adjustments. So I'm gonna go ahead and install the air cleaner, and then I'm gonna install the air cleaner cover. And hopefully this video helped you out on changing out a carburetor on a John Deere Briggs & Stratton engine. Uh, please subscribe and like, and I've got a ton of videos coming up, and I'll see you on the next one.